right, good morning. I'm Aaron Heiser of Makers Leather Supply, and today we're going to go back to our roots. Um, this is a beginner class for beginners that have a beginner toolkit. The basic seven-piece toolkit, okay, generally has six stamps and a swivel knife in it. Um, this is a brand new one. I just, the box is empty now, but I just took them out of the box. I am not using any of my nice Barry King or Clay Miller or any other fancy, fancy stamps. I'm using these, okay? Um, and this, again, this is, this is to, uh, to help out those that are, that are just beginning, that are staring at these seven stamps and like, what in the world am I supposed to do with these? So, the only modification I have done, I took the swivel knife out of the package, okay? And you see how much blade is just super duper shiny? Um, I took it out there and I've got a, a buffing wheel with just polishing compound on it, also known as Jewelers Rouge, and I just buff the tar out of it to get that nice shiny appearance. Um, shiny is good in leather craft. It, it generally is the mark of a, of a, of a sharper, uh, more ready to use tool. Okay, So that's all I did. I didn't sharpen it in any way. I just buffed it until it was shiny and that will help it glide through the leather. Um, I will also be using a strop every once in a while, which also helps to, uh, to, to, to help it gl glide through the leather. So, um, all of that being said, we're, we're going to start at the be beginning and work our way through um, this project here. Okay, and what this is, I'm about to go to Tarleton University and teach some teachers how to do leather work. All right, and they're going to be using this exact same... Um, set of stamps and, and, and swivel knife, okay? So, let us begin. Um, I've already transferred my, my pattern to the leather, okay? As you can see, it's oak leaves and acorns. Um, oak leaves and acorns are really old school uh, floral design are what's best for the, uh, the beginning seven piece set because that's what those tools were designed for, okay? Um, yeah, so again, I'm going to I'm gonna do some swivel knife cuts, okay? I've got um, one, two, three, four leaves and one, two, three, four, five acorns. And I'll do my swivel cuts first, and then we'll talk about each individual stamp. But first, how do you hold the swivel knife? What does the swivel knife do? So if you were to lay that swivel knife on the ground or on the table, just like that, Put your index finger up there in the yoke. Wrap your uh, middle finger and thumb around the sides of it. This is how you should hold it right here. Generally, I'll rotate it until the blade is kind of where I'm comfortable, which is kind of in line with my arm to start out. Um, one bad habit of the swivel knife is people choke way up on it and put that yoke way up here. It needs to stay out here for the dexterity of swiveling. Okay? So. Um, when you cut with your swivel knife, very simple procedure, I'm going to turn so you can see what I do. You set it down in the leather, you tilt it slightly away from you, and your cuts are usually in a pulling direction. Okay? So you pull it towards you. In the hundreds and hundreds of kids that we taught to use this at the FFA convention the other day, many of them were, were seen trying to push it away from them. And, and all kinds of craziness, but if you just lean it slightly away and pull it towards you, that's the way it goes, okay? The depth of your cut generally doesn't matter. You're not trying to do a very, very light scratch, but you're also, you don't need to cut all the way through the leather. Generally about a third the, 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 the depth of the leather is, is a very good cut, okay? Another bad habit, um, especially as you start to do your swivels and your turns, Folks like to lean it way over here to the comfortable side because then they can see the blade easier. And I fully understand they can see the blade easier, but they're doing a very terrible cut while they do that. So if you continue to hold it straight up and down, but then just tilt it slightly back, that's the way you want to go. So around all my uh, oak leaves and acorns, I have a borderline, and generally I like to cut those first. So this is the first time this swivel knife's ever touched a piece of leather. I put it in there right on that line and I'm gonna pull it down the line and I'm using my finger on the edge of this strap as a guide um, this strap is going to be a handle for a bag we're gonna to make tote bags with tooled handles next week I say next week it's in two days and I am way behind getting this project made <laughs> so 
Um, I'm only going to work on this end of this pattern. Uh, it also repeats itself on the other end of the strap, and I'll probably fill in that little gap there with a little bit of um, maybe a basket weave. I hadn't decided yet. I may just leave it blank. Who knows? So there's one side of the border. Now I need to pull down the other side of the border. Okay, and this swivel knife is cutting very, very well because I did that to the blade earlier and got it all good and shined up. Okay, um, and leather work, there are plenty of amazing tools that you can buy and spend tons of money on, but a lot of the basic tools like this one, if you if you use them right and you treat them right, they'll, they'll do just as good a work. Um, I could very comfortably do anything I do with my, my normal swivel knife with this one right here. Okay, now I'm going to explain everything I'm doing while I cut out one oak leaf and a couple of acorns. And then I'm going to um, go ahead and cut out the rest of them. And I'll probably speed that part of the video way up because we're not trying to make a three hour video here. Um, so here we go. So when I'm cutting a leaf like this, the first thing I'll do is cut the vein. Okay, so it's right down the center and it's two parts, you know, or two lines, I guess you could say. And then I'll go out here and I'll cut the scallops. Now, as a beginner with the swivel knife, this will be a difficult task because you have to swivel it pretty good. Okay, and if it's more comfortable for you, you can also turn the leather a little bit. There's nothing that says your leather can't turn with your project. Sometimes I'll even do like I did just here cut this half of it, then came back and cut the other half and made the two ends join up. Okay. Let's see if I can get a little bit more zoom for you. It's difficult with how I position my hand sometimes to, to get it on video while I do this. Alright, so there's one small leaf done. Now the acorn, I'm going to Cut out the head of the acorn here, and then I'll cut out the base of it. Um, generally, when you're doing your swivel cuts, and then the next part, which is called beveling, you will cut out things that are closest to you first. This is always going to be a 3D type, or usually going to be a 3D type image. And, uh, man, I hope I even did that on camera. I'm sorry. Um, anyway, so... As a 3D image, some of these images would be closer to you and some of them would be further away. And you're wanting to do it in the order of what's closest to you. So let, let's say I'm doing it totally wrong here, but I've got three acorns. One, two, and three. This one is on top of this one, and they're both on top of this one. But, of course, I'm an idiot and I cut out this first one first because I was too busy trying to explain it and not doing it. So, sorry about that. Um, so I'm going to go back. I'm going to cut this one out first. And the reason that you do that is, is because as you do the lower layers, as you cut them out, you, um, you don't want to accidentally cut into where it meets up with something that's on top of it. Because then that cut would be a little bit out of control and it would show up on your finished, finished product. Okay. Alright, so the top one's done. The middle one's about to be done, and the bottom one's already done because, again, I did it out of order, and I apologize. All right. Um, the other, the bottom of the... Okay. Now, this oak leaf, normally, it could be a stem that goes all the way out here or something, but this is actually a repeating pattern, and this part right here is actually going to be down inside the bag, so I'm not even worried about cutting out the very bottom of that. Um, leaf. So, all that being said, again, that was my explanation on the swivel knife. Now I'm going to go ahead and cut out the rest of this, and um, then when I come back, we are going to um, talk about the next tool. Let's talk about these stamps right quick okay there's six of them those six plus the swivel knife make the basic seven tool set right so 
we have one called a vayner, okay? And the vayner is kind of a crescent shape, and uh, sometimes it'll have scallops, sometimes it'll just have lines, sometimes it'll be smooth. There's a thousand different ways to make a vayner. Um, generally, this is exactly the one you'll get in uh, a seven tool um, beginner set. Uh, I say that because some of these tools might have different textures and things like that, um, depending on which kit you're buying and stuff like that. Um, anyway, so this is mostly used to add texture to scrolls and, and leaves and things like that, and they're used um, to, to signify veins. Uh, that's why it's called a veiner. We will use this one on this project. This little doodah here is called a cedar, okay? And it's just a little dot. Uh, cedars come, again, in different shapes and sizes. This is pretty much the, the basic one. It's got some little lines for texture around the outside of it, and then it's just a hollow dot on the inside. Um, we, I don't believe we'll be using this one on this project, um, but a lot of the time when you've got like an old school pattern and stuff, they'll be used to uh, put the seeds in the, in the center of a flower, okay? This right here is called a camouflager, okay? Kind of a half moon crescent shape. Um, and then generally it will have lines that come out almost like the rays of a sun. Um, it, it's used for a lot of different things. It adds a lot of texture. Uh, when you're doing scrolls and things like that, some people can use them as a veiner in some areas. Um, I haven't decided yet if I'm going to use this one on this project or not. It can be used on oak leaves depending on the style you're going for. This one is a backgrounder. Okay, so in our pattern, you've got your leaves and then you've got your border and then there's blank space behind it. We will be using the heck out of this backgrounder in that blank space, and it'll help push that space down and give it texture so that it looks like it's actually behind the leaves and the border. Um, again, a bunch of different shapes and sizes for a tool like this, um, but this is a very useful one. Uh, my custom ones that I had made, I actually took this exact tool to uh, Clay Miller and had him make me six that were just like it, but different sizes and that's what I use. This is a pear shader, okay, kind of pear-shaped. Um, this one happens to be smooth. Sometimes they're textured. Uh, sometimes they'll have a, like, um, oh, what is the, the word? Checkering, sorry. Checkering or maybe lines on them, lines going horizontally or vertically. Um, anyway, uh, the pear shader is used to show shading on, uh, on your leather. Uh, we will be using this tool as well. And then the last but not least, this is actually one of the most important tools to me, is a beveler. Okay, The beveler, as you can see, has a profile. It has a slant to it. Okay, And this is what you use to go along your lines and stuff to, uh, to show the depth and to basically make one level appear to be underneath another level. Okay, um, this one is a very difficult tool. Um, if you're not paying attention, I guess you could say it's a very difficult tool. Um, it's a simple tool to use. You just have to know the basic rule of which way it points. Okay? This is the first tool we're going to use on our little project here. And uh, so I'm going to put a little bit more water on this. Try to get a good area to, uh, to watch. Now I'm using... My personal maul with this, this is an 18-ounce maul. Um, for years I tooled with a lighter one. It was about 16 ounces. But um, this one was given to me by a good friend, and I'm, I'm, I love it. So, um, when you're using the beveler, again, it has like a, uh, it has a, a bevel, um, a slant to it, okay? So what you're gonna do is you're gonna figure out, like this is the vein that goes up, the, the, or the stem that goes right up through the leaf. Well, if you were looking at a real leaf, then the stem would be up just a little bit higher than the rest of the leaf, right? So, we're gonna use our beveler to show that. I put the tall part of the tool, as I call it, right up against that line, and I give it a little tap. And then I move it a little bit and I tap it again. I just do it continuously, 
And what I'm doing is called walking the beveler, and it's not the easiest task. Um, it's kind of a learned trait. But when you're done, that's what you'll have. Okay, as you can see, now this stem appears to be on top of that level of the leaf. Okay, now I need to turn it over and do the other side of the stem so that it totally sticks up. Okay, but first, just like cutting, I should do this acorn that's on top of the leaf. Okay, I want to bevel everything that's closest to me first and then the stuff that's away. Um, in that same rule, I also should have beveled my border first. Okay. So I'm just going to put it up against the border and I'm going to do the exact same thing, walking it down. Now this beveler is smooth. Generally I do prefer tools with uh, the checkering on them, but there's nothing wrong with a smooth beveler, it's just a personal preference. There's a million ways to skin the cat, and I've got my way just like everybody else has their way. Okay. Alright, so I did that side of the border, now I'm going to do the other side of the border. Again, I'm going to do all this to one leaf, all the different tools, and then um, I'll do the rest of this uh, later on. Okay, the acorn itself. So the first thing I want to do is kind of bevel down around the outside of the big body of the acorn. And then I'm going to do around its base. Sorry, I know my hands are in the way. Very difficult to do this in front of a camera if the camera's not over your shoulder. I don't have a cameraman. <laughs> Alright, so there it is. Now that acorn is up on top of the level of the, the leaf. Now, right here, where the acorn body meets the base of it, there is a little bit of a depth difference there, but not enough that I want to hit it, hit my beveler, okay? Because then that shows just as much depth there as it shows between here and the leaf. So all I'm going to do is put it on that line and just kind of push it with my hand just a little bit. Okay? And it's just barely going to push that down so that... It looks right. Okay, now I'm going to bevel the other side of my stem like we were talking about a while ago. And then I'm going to bevel around the outside of the, the, um, the leaf. Okay, around the outside, around the outside. <laughs> Alright, so here's where it's cut out. This would be background back here. So I need to bevel down the background. So let me turn this thing where I can try to get it where you can see. Now, you're not always going to have a beveler that fits perfectly in your area. Okay, like this is a pretty large beveler and that's a pretty small area. So you have to get inventive sometimes. So I did as far as I could go on one way and then I kind of turned it and went the other way. And I just kind of rotated it in position to try to make it fit that little bitty area. It did an okay job. We'll clean it up with the backgrounder here in a few minutes. Same thing there. Now I've got a, up here at the top of the leaf, I've got a line. And again, one of the biggest mistakes people have is not knowing where to put the beveler. Okay, I've seen people turn it sideways and then you've just got choppy lines all along where you should have this one nice smooth line. And then I've seen them put it on the wrong side of the line, which would make the leaf look like it was down in the leather, not up out of the leather. Okay, all things that if you're paying attention, it's not difficult to do, but you got to pay attention to where your tool is. So there we go. Might as well do the bottom of the leaf here right quick. And then we're going to be done with our beveler on one leaf and one acorn. Okay, so there it is. Now, I'm going to go ahead and do the background real quick because 
it will make it easier for you to see everything else. But first, I need to bevel around this acorn right quick, just so I have an area to background. Okay. Alright, now I've got it defined. Here's an area for background, 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 background. I think I said one of those twice. Alright, so we've got our little checkered backgrounding tool. Okay. And again, this is really going to help us to, to see where we're going and what we're doing. And I'm going to start out with the smallest area here. And I'm just going to put it right up along the borderline there. And give it a little tap. You see all that texture it put in that one tiny little teardrop? Well, let's do the rest of it. So again, it's a tool that you can kind of walk. And do an entire area with. There you go. Okay, so I'm going to do the rest of those areas right quick. And this is why I had several different sizes made so that I can do this quick eat quickly or um, do even a smaller area if I need. Things like that. Okay, and then sometimes the little very sharp tip of this tool really helps out um, I'll put it up here and I'll lean it towards the tip and it gives that little tip right there some definition okay it really pushes that um, the very very sharp point there it helps it to really show definition there and that there's different levels okay so real quickly I'm gonna go ahead and uh, background these other couple of areas and we'll move on to the next tool Generally, I do background last, but I'm doing it right now because I know it makes it a lot easier to see on camera when the background is already done. You can really pick out the other parts. So there we go. I have backgrounded all around that one leaf. So the next thing we'll do is we'll use our pear shader. Okay, so again, it's kind of pear shaped. It is smooth. I do prefer a textured one, um, but that's okay. Now, this is one of those tools you can use it as much or as little as you want. The more you use it, then the more detail you can put into the leaf and things like that but the more chances you also have of, of really overdoing it. And I'm one of those generally less is more, but I do like my oak leaves and I haven't done them in a long time. So we're gonna play a little. So my general rule of thumb, like on an oak leaf, okay? We've got these areas where the leaf kind of sags and then goes back up right there and right there. I like to um, use my pear shader and go around those areas and kind of highlight them a little bit, okay? The good news is leaves are a natural thing, no two are alike, so it's kind of hard to screw up. Um, and then there's other areas where I'll just kind of go around and give it texture by moving the tool around and doing it over and over. The biggest thing is you don't want to see just that lone shape of that tool, okay? Um, somebody that's been doing leather work for a while can pick that out and be like, okay, amateur, what are you doing here? Okay, so it's best to try to make it fade in or out, in and out. And then if you are just doing a tap and move and rotate and everything, then do so many of them that they kind of overlap and everything. And it gives your leaf a lot of, um, for back, lack of a better word, maybe wrinkles. So there we go. As I move it around, I'm hoping you can catch it in the light and see that now that leaf has a lot of texture to it. Okay. Now, um, if you notice, we still haven't messed with the acorn um, other than just beveling it out. Um, that's on purpose. That's all we're going to, to do until we go to do our final swivel cuts. And then that'll show you what we do with an acorn. Now, we got our veiner here. And we're going to put some veins on this leaf. So there's a lot of different ways to do it. I could do it 
this way and run it all the way up the leaf, putting one every sixteenth of an inch or whatever. I can do it this way and do it every half an inch or so as I go up. This is one of those where personal style comes into it. Uh, if you get into leather crafting pretty good and you really pay attention to the, the guys that are out there that are doing you know lots of it, everybody seems to have a unique style that they do. Um, so yeah, I mean I can look at a lot of leather craft and, and tell you who might have done it and uh, sometimes I'll be right. <laughs> so anyway, I personally like it this way. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it where the bow comes up and away, up and away from the vein. I want to lean it towards that main uh, stem or vein of the, of the, the leaf and give it a tap. And then I'm going to move it up about a quarter of an inch and give it another tap, another tap. And as the stem curves, I'm going to very slightly rotate the tool to kind of uh, follow the curve. Okay? See what we did there? Veins. Now, on the other side of the stem, we're going to do the exact same thing. We're just going to mirror it. Okay? So, a little tap. Move up to the next one. Tap. And they don't have to be exactly opposite of each other. They can uh, stagger, they can be um, asymmetrical. I mean, again, leaves are a natural thing. No two will be alike. So there you go. That is all the tooling per se I'm gonna do as far as beating on this, this one leaf, okay? Next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come back with my swivel knife and um, like the base of an acorn generally has like a almost like a checkered or hashed appearance. So I'm gonna just kinda cut some lines into it to represent that. Now, I will say this, when I first started leather work, I was doing some acorns on a belt for a fella, and I was like, man, everybody just does these giant lines here. I could really make that look like acorns. And I did. I mean, I cut all these tiny, tiny, tiny little squares, and it was amazing. And then I found out that it really screwed up the structure of the leather, and it was pulling the leather could pull out. Um, anyway, so that ended up being a really bad thing. Don't do that. Turns out the people that have been doing it for hundreds of years knew better than me who had just started that day. <laughs> All right, now I did those cuts and then I'm gonna do a few uh, what's called decorative cuts on the, um, the leaf itself, okay? And generally on a leaf, I mine just kind of follow the exterior of it. So I got these teardrop shapes. I'll kind of accentuate them a little bit. I'll come down that outside edge right there. Accentuate my teardrop here again. Okay, and then this one doesn't have it. So I'll move up to this one where you can see the very top of the, the uh, leaf. Sometimes I'll even do a little peak cut you know, where you can see the um, the tips, where, where it gets sharp there on the ends. Um, so anyway, that's it. That's, that's using the basic seven tool set on an oak leaf. Okay. So I'm gonna leave the camera on and I'm gonna high speed tool the rest of this just so you can laugh at my hands moving around all fast.
All right, folks, so that's it. That's pretty much everyone's introduction to um, tooling and leathercraft. Um, I hope it uh, made some sense of some of the tools that you've seen or maybe you uh, looked into buying. Um, yeah, until next time, I'm Aaron Heiser of Maker's Leather Supply. Have a great day.